Hi everybody, it's Mia again. So I have a guest joining me today. It is one of my friends on TDY who I've met her. Her name is Sergeant Jay, or we call her Jasmina. Hello, hi guys. <laughs> so today what we're gonna be talking about, we're gonna be talking about some male to male stuff or joint spouses we call it as well. So this might be for the people who are like, hey, I have a spouse or in the Air Force. How do I get to them? How do they get to me? What am I supposed to do and that kind of stuff? And like I've always told you guys before, if you have any kind of a deeper situation that you need to let me know about, my Instagram is in below and you're more than welcome to comment, to speak to me privately about this kind of stuff. I'm more than happy to help you out and that kind of stuff. Also, Sergeant J has her own YouTube channel. I'll be leaving it in the description below so you can go follow her and subscribe to her and all that fun stuff. Her stuff is about the Air Force kind of vlog. She's going to be talking about subscription boxes she has and that kind of stuff. So if you're tired of all my Air Force nonsense, you can go follow her. But no, thank you. That was sweet. But about our male to male stuff, so we're just going to kind of start out with talking about our kind of stories of how we had met our husbands and how we did our joint spouse. So if you want to start first. Okay. Hi guys, like she said, my name is Jasmina. Um, and so pretty much how I met my husband is I met him at my first base and then- his... So where was your first base? Tell me that. Oh, uh, Texas, Randolph Air Force Base Okay. in Texas. Um, he w had been to a couple bases. Um, so we met there and then I got orders to Hickam, um, which is in Hawaii and he got orders to Yokota, which is in Japan. And um, we still dated in between. Um, and then a couple of years later, we got married and we signed up for joint spouse. So that's pretty much how we got together. So he was in Japan and then you were at Hickam in Hawaii mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. So you guys applied for joint spouse after getting married and that's how you guys got to Columbus in Mississippi. Yes. Gotcha. And, and then, now we're here. <laughs> and, and now we're and now we're all in TDY together. So I think I've said my story a couple times about how I met my husband, but if I have not, my husband and I, so he was serving at Osan, I was at Kunsan, and we were both in South Korea. Oh sorry, I oh, scratched you. <laughs> um, but we were both serving in South Korea. I was leaving in like a couple of weeks when we first started talking. Then we stopped talking for about a year and a half. We saw some other people, we talked to some other people, but then eventually we re-met, we reconnected, started dating. Six months later, we got engaged. Four months after that, we ended up getting married. We had been separated for about a year and a half since he was serving in Ramstein in Germany. And I've been in Lackland Air Force Base in Texas, which all of you know because I talk about BMT constantly, how I work for them and how I talk with my trainees constantly and that kind of stuff. Um, but he got back to America about a couple of days right before Thanksgiving and then six months later here I am at Keesler on a TDY for five and a half months so we're separated again for most of our marriage but it's all right <laughs> it works so some stuff that we want to talk about was some differences about PCSing maybe with dependents mm -hmm. and then maybe with a mill to mill or with another military member so when you usually make appointments and that kind of stuff, say if you're making a medical appointment, what they usually will ask is like, hey, what's your sponsor's DOD ID number or what's their social? You as the military member, you are your own sponsor. So you would obviously give them your social over the phone. Mm -hmm. But if your spouse or your dependent was calling in, they would give the person your social because you're their sponsor. As military members, we are our own sponsor so we don't have to be like, oh, I have to wait till my spouse does this so I can do this next. You can do it whenever you need to and that kind of stuff. So orders are sometimes a little bit different. So with orders and especially with household goods, with mm -hmm. TMO, moving furniture, and just your entire house and that kind of stuff, there's different weight allowances. And it also depends on the rank too as well, of course. Maybe you have a certain weight allowance as an E5 with dependents, but you have a completely different weight allowance as being an E5 with a mill to mill joint mm -hmm. spouse orders and that kind of stuff. So that can depend on stuff. With medical as well, obviously with medical, 
you're in the Air Force TRICARE, they know everything about you. So they will be able to make sure they send you and your spouse to somewhere where you guys can be together and where you're obviously gonna get medically taken care of. The same thing that I've talked about before with EFMP and Q codes, my favorite thing about the Air Force is they not only make sure they take care of the member, but they make sure they take care of the dependents. So for mm -hmm. some reason, if you deploy suddenly, or maybe like you're on TDY, like how I am, to help support different missions because like during COVID crisis and that kind of stuff, they're gonna make sure we take care of our spouses, mm -hmm. our dependents, our little ones, whatever the unit need to do. Um, if you're married to Guard or Reserve, so I've only dealt with this probably maybe once or twice when I was serving in Korea. Um, we had a member, he was also going to Hickam in Hawaii and he's like, oh, my spouse, they're, I believe, Guard or Reserve. And I'm like, well, because they're Guard Reserve, we don't treat them as active duty, so they're automatically considered dependent unless they're on active orders. Please do not quote me on that because stuff might have changed in the regulations since three to four years ago to especially right now and that kind of stuff. Some really good AFIs to look up are 36-2110 or AFI 36-2110. Zero two, and I'll leave those in the description below. If for some other reason, if you want to look in the regulations yourself, kind of read over whatever mm -hmm. you need to. What we learned in tech school of how we find our answers if we could control find on that kind of stuff, we'll put in a certain phrase or a certain word that we're looking for, and then from there you just kind of do your own research. If you're married to another branch, let's say, so what if you're active duty and I'm married to like army for some other mm -hmm. reason? Um, the Air Force usually accommodates a lot better to the other branches than maybe like the Army accommodating to the Air Force. As long as you are able with your particular AFC to go almost anywhere such as security forces, maybe services, personnel definitely, it'll be a lot easier because they'll just try to place you at the closest base as they can to the to the arm base, to the Navy base, to the Marine base, or however it may be in your particular situation and that kind of stuff. If you do live over a certain type of miles, I just recently found this out from one of my friends who works for the tech school orders here at Keesler. Um, she had a airman who was supposed to drive like over like a hundred miles every day to work just because of like the way her and her spouse like basis just ended up being and stuff. Mm -hmm. So she has to apply for our exception of policy memorandum <laughs> basically it just goes to your commander it goes to afpc as long as they approve it they need to work on her work hours because a hundred miles yeah that's a lot it's a <laughs> long ways and if you're working a normal like seven to four you're probably gonna have to get up at like four drive all that time and then you won't get home to like who knows six seven at night and that kind of stuff and that's not very feasible or it's not very it's not understanding to the people. Right. So that's the reason why we have this kind of stuff in place to make sure of the protection of each military member in the Air Force and dependents and whatever we need to do next. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about is the driver versus follower. In an, in an assignment, you will always have someone who is joint spouse and then you will always have another person that is has the actual orders that drives the assignment. Um, I know for me, um, my husband is a little higher ranking than me, so we just found out we got an assignment to Beale Air Force Base in California, which for him, he's the driver. Um, so on his orders, it won't have a code, but on my orders, I think it has like a A4. Yep, so your code on the back of your orders will say joint spouse, mm -hmm. his will not because he's not technically joint spouse. You're the joint spouse right. to him. Yes. So the follower will always have that little code on there and then the other person will not. Yes, so just in case you're wondering, like why do I have this code and my spouse doesn't, that's the reason that they're most likely the driver. AFSCs play a big role into that too, my uh -huh. husband and I. We are two completely different AFSCs. He's intel and personnel. I can go anywhere. He has like 10 bases to go to, unfortunately. <laughs> So with our situation, him coming to laugh and that kind of stuff, it was a little bit weird because there were a lot of other factors going on way behind the scenes and that kind of stuff. But if I didn't have all that stuff going on, he 100% would have been the driver. And who knows, I might have been in Florida by this point. Nice. <laughs> Another thing that 
I want to bring up real quick that I, we forgot to mention possibly in your video because mm -hmm. we're going to be posting this to both of our channels is Deeros. So yes, with Deeros and that kind of stuff, I might have spoken about this a little bit um, with when you're when you're overseas or you're Oconus as we call it, you have a thing called a Deeros. A short tour is anywhere from 12 to 15 months. So when I arrived in Korea, I arrived in August of 2016. However, my Deeros was August of 2017. Deeros is for date expected to return from an overseas area. Mm -hmm. It basically meant, hey, here's the day you need to basically leave this space. <laughs> I don't care where you go. Yeah. You can't <laughs> be here by the time this, but by the time August of 2017 ends, you need to leave. And if you don't leave, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. You broke, you broke your appointment later than date. It's a lot of paperwork that gets involved and stuff, which has happened many times, unfortunately. I've had people break their report no later than date twice when I was there. And it's a lot of paperwork to go through AFPC with that kind of stuff. But say if you and your spouse go to Germany or something together, but your spouse gets there like a month before because you're coming from different bases, what you need to do then is whoever has the farther out zero state that spouses so say if my husband's is december of 2021 mm -hmm. but i'm set i'm february of 2022 what my husband needs to do he's he needs to go to the mpf or the mps and he needs to let the app on assignments know and be like hey i'm putting in a deer's extension so i can extend my deer's to my wife's deer to my wife's stairs because i want to leave at the exact same time as her we don't want to constantly be separated, even if it's for those couple months, because then you can out-process together, mm -hmm. you can do household goods together, and it's much easier, especially if you have little ones involved. Okay, another thing we're going to talk about is intent codes, and how I was told to remember this in tech school is, like, what is your intention with your spouse or your military, um, the other military member? Um, so we have three intent codes. The first co uh, intent code is A, and this, um, I remember it like, you can go anywhere. So if you want, if you and your spouse um, want to, how do you put it? Oh yeah, you and your spouse both serve a short tour together. Um, I know for one of my airmen back home, um, they just recently got an assignment and they're both going to Korea. So one's going to Kunsan, one's going to um, Osan, so they have the intent code A is when they want to serve together, they want to come back together. Um, another intent code is um, B, which stands for babies, <laughs> which pretty much says, I don't want to be separated from my husband. I want to be with him more. I don't want to be separated from my spouse. I want to be with them. Um, don't separate us. Did I explain that? So, if you didn't really understand, let me break it down real quick. So, A is for any, so the three intent codes, A, B, and H, which makes absolutely sense in the alphabet. So, A is for anywhere. I'm okay with being split up. I'm okay with him going, him or her going to one place, and then I'm going to a completely other place. And that's what A stands for. I'm okay with being separated for, like, a year at the most and stuff. B, I only want to go to bases that we can say together. So I know you were talking about how your intent code is A, you're okay if say if you went to Korea and your husband went to Turkey for a year and mm -hmm. then you guys just got back together. Because me and my husband, since we had been separated for so long and now we're still separated, I told him when he was coming to Lackland, I wanna stay as B for the moment until we just get that time to ourselves again and before we basically get sick of each other. <laughs> and, and, then change it. <laughs> and then change it again. But right now we're B because I want to be able to stay with him and only go to a base where he can go, obviously, just because of the less bases he has. And then our last one is? Our last one is H, which stands for heck no. And this is... This or is, the haters. <laughs> oh, okay, or the haters. Um, and this is pretty much telling the Air Force, I don't want nothing to do with my spouse. I don't want to be with them. Um, I've seen a lot. For the only reasons this intent code is in, maybe they're going through a separation or a divorce. Um, they'll change their intent code to age because technically they're still considered married until they get that uh, divorce decree um, to update. And then I also I also learned today that it could mean something else. 
So what I kind of learned also about age is I learned this in Korea. So I had a sergeant over there and her husband, I believe he was guard or reserve, but he was in the air force or maybe he was active and then he went guard or reserve by the time I met her. And I was like, why is your intent code age? Like, don't you want to be with your husband? And she said, well, sometimes there are people who might spend like years at a base and like, you're still married obviously, but you're just, both spouses are just sick and tired. Like I'm tired of being stuck at Minot. We've been here for five years already. I don't want to spend another five years here. So let's put H and then hopefully one of us can pick up an assignment. And as soon as that person picks up an assignment and stuff, the other person can, you'll just change your intent code again. And then you'll just try to apply for a joint spouse. You're like, oh, my spouse has a, a pending assignment to Hickam or to Patrick in Florida and that kind of stuff. Or to Germany. Or to Germany, <laughs> who knows? And then from there, that's when you change back your intent code if you'd like to, if you are going through a legal separation or through a legal divorce and that kind of stuff. But other than that, that's all I have for Joint Spouse. Do you have anything else? That's all I have. So like I said, you guys are more than welcome to welcome to email me, email, <laughs> message me on Instagram and that kind of stuff. I'll leave the stuff down below. I'll also make sure to uh, link Sergeant J's YouTube channel below if you're interested in watching hers. I know she recently got started. She doesn't have a lot of videos quite yet, but she'll be able to get there soon too. Um, it's a Hers is about Air Force, different kind of vlogs she does, subscription boxes she does and stuff. So definitely go check her out. I'll leave the different AFIs below that we said earlier in case that you want to research yourself for any odd reason. But other than that, that is all I have. Thank you so much for watching again and I'll hope to see y'all soon. Bye!